Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we make informed decisions about our financial future. This is our Forex Technical Analysis video update. Before we begin our video, we always like to start off our disclosures. Any symbols that you see today should not be inferred as a trader recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, option, they all have a level of risk associated with them. You can lose all of your money. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is still your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. As we said, this is our Forex Technical Analysis video update. In each of our videos, we will review the prior system's price action to come up with key support and resistance price levels. We'll look at the crude and gold charts to come up with leading sentiment. We'll come up with a low volatility watch list, an inside bar watch list, and we'll have an economic uh, calendar update to see what could affect our future and open trades. And finally, if there's time, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. Let's pull up the charts. As usual, we are starting off with the gold daily chart. We can see that uh, the 20 moving average here is continuing acting as support as it uh, is moving higher, but we can also see that it's now in a range between about 1792 and 1899, so about a hundred point range that the market seems to be consolidating in. So we certainly want to watch for a break of that one way or the other. Uh, down to the downside, we will be breaking this 20 moving average, possibly heading to the 50. So that's something to watch. And of course, if we break to the upside, possibly making new highs above 1900. Um, certainly, gold has been uh, on a tear as we zoom out and take a look. We can see on a weekly, there's that 20 moving average acting as support. So um, we are well off that 20 moving average, well off of it. So I still say eventually the market has to pull back, but that's not going to happen until uh, you know some clarity in the global economy. Right now, there's still a flight to gold. Now, when we switch over here to our one hour time frame, we can see that wide range of consolidation. Our market profile uh, shows us that our point of control probably would be around 1855. You can see the accumulation here. You can see the accumulation here. So in this 1850 to 1860 price level appears to be the most volume, a little accumulation down here at 1830. So we would have to get out of this range. If I scroll over this way, you can really see that that accumulation of volume up here, accumulation below where we are. So something has to happen, either uh, stability in the world economy to hurt gold or more uh, instability in the world economy to have gold shoot up past that 1900. But again, uh, we're going to be watching gold in this 100 point range. So with gold consolidating, what does that mean for our dollar currency pairs? Well, first off, we have the Euro dollar daily. And for what, two, three, four months, we were watching this 1.45 down to 1.39 price level and we just kind of went in and out of that for a long time and now we're starting to see we've got a falling three pattern here and we're starting to see an acceleration to the downside and so uh, we see some key things here let me uh, zoom out on this and you can see here's the weekly we had a nice uptrend line and we broke that um, we're also breaking the 50 moving average here also so there are some key things happening here to the downside and what we would have to watch probably is we've got this swing high here uh, that might act as support at 1.32 and I mean you know next we got to come down into this area which is 1.26 1.29 so there are some levels to go if we continue to lever but first we're going to have to watch this 1.33 ish price level some wicks over here and, and again what's going on with this swing high here when we come over to our one hour time frame we can obviously see we're well below our long term moving average we are in a buy zone but just like the dollar frame kept going down 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 just because you're in a buy zone doesn't mean you have to uh, immediately uh, go up. We know we could continue to go lower as we have. We can see that the dollar has taken control. We've got that divergence and with that divergence uh, each pair moving in the opposite direction we've got that strong push lower and now that we're running parallel 
uh, we got a little sideways action. Uh, we can see that the euro is trending down with a big move here, and we can see that the dollar is trending higher. Um, and our last indicator is basically right now in the neutral zone. So we are in a buy zone. We are below our long-term moving average. Uh, what's going to be our catalyst to stabilize this pair? As long as the dollar is in control, this pair will continue to move lower. The pound dollar. Also, we've been watching a big range here, 1.65 down to 1.59. And we've been watching that for several months. And with this falling three pattern, uh, we have broken that today also. So we'll zoom out on this one. And we could draw our uptrend line here. And we will continue to see, you know, again, what the bears have in their favor is the fact that we have broken this uptrend line on a weekly. We have broken the 50 moving average. And so now on this one, what we're going to have to watch is probably right in here this 1.53 price level if we continue to move lower as we zoom over to our one hour time frame we're clearly below our long-term moving average we are in a buy zone area um, you can see we're, we're just below um, the area that we said was acting as support now that we broke it will we come back up and test it and hold as resistance we'll see we can see a little divergence even though the pound spiked up we still see a little divergence here which got us our little price action move down here but overall we can see that the pound is averaging down and again the dollar is averaging up our indicators in a neutral zone as long as the dollar is in control we will continue to see this move lower on the daily time frame Finally, we're going to look at the dollar franc. Here, we can see a little bullishness as we've made our run up to the 200 moving average. Very nice, very nice. Of course, this big day makes up the majority of that. So where can we go now? Well, let's zoom on out. And we can kind of see probably somewhere in here, the one uh, 8 point, I'm sorry, 0.8960, Somewhere in here is probably our next target, if not the 50 moving average, which is at 0.9 on the weekly time frame. So that's probably where we're going to be looking to go next. As we come over to our one hour time frame, we are clearly well above our long term moving average and we are in a sell zone. However, the dollar remains to be in control. Although the, uh, the franc is moving up a little bit, but still the dollar is in control. The franc has made a, a dip lower here after averaging higher and the dollar continues to average higher so as long as the dollar is in control and our indicator is in neutral right now but as long as the dollar is in control we will make that run to the 50 moving average here on a weekly as we come to our low volatility and inside bar watch list we're going to start off with our low volatility watch list this is our one hour time frame using Bollinger Bands and watching the high and low of those Bollinger Bands for a breakout. However, right now, we currently do not have any candidates. In addition, for our inside bar watch list, which is our daily high and low of the range, comparing it with yesterday's range, and also watching for a break, but we also do not have any candidates for our inside bar watch list also. Moving on to our education spotlight of our video, uh, we've been talking about trading plans. and and that being a primary source of what separates winning and losing traders. Uh, today, I was looking at my Twitter account, uh, and someone asked, you know, what's the first step? Well, the first step is to make a trading plan, and that usually is what separates winning and losing traders. And, you know, this is a good uh, moment to say that next Sunday, one week from today, September 18th, I'm having a Twitter day where just send me a question. I'm going to be on Twitter and I will reply back with your answers. You know, you got a stock you want me to look at. You have a, a pair that you want me to look at. Next Sunday, just, uh, you guys know, move up with Mike. Just send me a, a, a question, and I will answer them for free. But to get back to what we're talking about as far as trading plans and, and, and what separates winning and losing traders, uh, trading is not about hitting home runs, but it's about hitting for average. And too often, because people don't document, because they don't make a trading plan, they are going for home runs every every time. And 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 not only are they striking out, they're getting ejected from the game because they blow out their accounts. 
That's why you have to have a training plan. That's why you have to document to see what exactly is going to be your plan to reach your investing goals. When pitchers prepare for the game, they get a a, a market report uh, uh, of the other team and they find out where to pitch each batter. Same thing for the batters. They get a report on the pitcher so they know where that pitcher likes to, to pitch. They know uh, maybe that there's some hints, there's some gives. The market gives some hints. The market gives some gives. The market has a report. It has behaviors that we can watch for so that we can level the playing field and take advantage of that. But that doesn't mean because we know a fastball is coming that we're going to get a home run. We're going to swing at it. We're going to give our best approach to it. We're going to protect our profit. And we're going to take as many bases as the market gives us. But we're going to hit for average versus always going for the home run. As again, you can find our videos on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And as we just said, next Sunday, September 18th, is going to be a Twitter day. Move Up With Mike is the Twitter name. Come with your questions about your Forex strategies, your Forex pairs, what I think about them, not just the ones we covered in the video, but all of them. Uh, and I will do my best to answer the questions about what I see in the market. Of course, with the usual disclosure that it's for informational purposes only. You know, you can find our great five course video on how to develop your own high probability trading setups. That will give you a, a gauge into who we are as teachers, as coaches. And that's where we can work with you one on one to help you develop that personalized trading plan so that you're hitting for average and not trying to go for home runs all the time. Get paid to trade. Uh, there are forks rebates for your trading. It doesn't change the spreads, it doesn't change the conditions. It's just getting rebates for your trades. And finally, if you're looking for signals, we have a bunch of providers for you. You can find the one that matches your trading plan, have it traded automatically, or get the signals and trade them yourself. Because then again, it's not about the system, it's not about the signal, it's not about the room. It's about knowing the market, knowing the hints, developing a trading plan that allows you to take advantage of those hints, and hitting for average instead of for home runs. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.